Hello and welcome to the D1 Softball Pitching Circle. I'm Tara Henry, your host, and joined by two amazing athletes this week from Arizona State and Lindsay Lopez and Allison Royalty. Uh, you guys, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Um, so we'll just start it off with you, Lindsay. And when you talk to me about when you first actually started pitching, um, where were you? What got you, you know, into softball? What was that moment like? Yeah, um, well, it all started at um, Little League at Coon Creek. And we, I was put on a team that had no pitchers. But the time before this, I was always asking my mom, hey, mom, can I be a pitcher? And she's just like, no, it's too much work, too much money because of lessons and all that. But um, so that team had no pitchers. They just had everyone try it out. And I just had the motion down. So they're like, OK, you're going to be our pitcher. And then that's just where it all started. <laughs> but yeah. So you start, how old were you? I was about 10 because I started playing at eight. So. Ah, and and then were you recruited because you were a lefty? Did they think, oh my gosh, she's a lefty. Um, we want to get her in the circle or was you the one that pushed it? Um, I'm not sure. I think I was just like one of the only ones that can make it across the plate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Allison, uh, Allison Royal D here with us as well. How about you? When did you first started pitching? Uh, I think I started pitching maybe when I was around 10 that age I've been playing softball since I have a bat in my hand really so um, I think I picked up pitching around 10 um I didn't really I didn't play select ball till about 12 or so and that's kind of when I got a little more serious about it but um I just always loved it and I threw hard at my age so and I could throw it, throw it over the plate so um I always enjoyed it it was really fun for me so and Allison, who was your biggest influence in terms of you getting into softball? Um, did you have anybody that helped you get into softball or that you looked up to that you wanted to play um, the sport? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I just remember I would watch a lot of college softball, honestly. There isn't really one name. I mean, um, when you're growing up, the classics like Jenny Finch, Monica Abbott. Um, but I was really just a fan of college softball always watching and sitting down on the weekends and um, watching the SEC play because I'm from Texas. So we got all the channels. We watched Texas play, SEC teams play. So um, I was just say the whole sport as a whole really just inspired me. And I knew when I was watching them on TV, I was like, I want to do that one day. I want to do that. Very cool. Lindsay, how about you? Um, I would say Dallas Escobedo because I, since they were close to home, we were always watching their games and every time we were there I'd always ask mom um hey do you think I could like be playing there one day and she's like I don't know maybe if you work hard but I always had that feeling deep in deep inside my heart that I was going to put in the hard work and that I could make it there and have you met Dallas yes <laughs> yeah. I actually have a picture I have a picture with her when I was younger <laughs> you do oh you have to yeah say you get to work with her at all? Did she come back to, to Arizona State? Um, she came down like in the fall to throw a little bit. So I was able to talk with her there. So it was, it was really cool to be able to talk with her, not only just be able to watch her, but like pick inside her head and see what she's thinking of when she's out there pitching. And speaking of pitching and coaching, what is it, Allison, what is it like for you as a freshman coming in, working with Coach Ford and working as a staff? What, what have you noticed has been, been the biggest um, takeaway in terms of working um, with Coach Ford? I would say the biggest takeaway is just having an outside voice in when you're pitching, because I feel like pitchers are very... Um, like we're very in tune with ourselves and our pitching. And at least for me, I didn't have a pitching coach my last two or three years in high school. So I had just gone through like really getting to know my pitching and myself and then coming here, having a pitching coach every day. It's different, but I like it because it's like, sometimes I'll get in my head too much and she'll be like, no, like this is all you need to correct. Like there's nothing more here. Just do this and you'll be fine. Like um, little things like that. And I think it's, really great having that professional to give us advice and, and help us through any challenges that we have. 
And Lindsay, same question for you. You were obviously there in the shortened 2020 season, so you got a little taste of it. You actually didn't get into Pac-12 play yet, and we'll get into that. But what's it been like for you and your experience in this last, you know, year and a half for you? Yeah, I mean, she really broke me down with um, mechanics and starting from um, starting from the bottom and really focusing on certain spots. I. I did spins like crazy all last year. And so I really had to learn how to trust the process that whole year. And now I'm seeing how all that hard work has been paying off. So, I mean, it's, it's working. And you didn't get to get into Pac-12 play. You guys are, are you know, now just finished your series with Oregon. Um, the only series you guys have actually lost is against UCLA. So you've done spectacular in the pack. Allison, tell me about your experience in terms of throwing in, in the Pac-12 conference. Um, you had some preseason tests as well that you guys um, have had a pretty good strength of schedule. Tell me what it's been like for you and your experience uh, in the Pac. I've had a lot of fun so far, honestly. The How competitive it is is really what makes me have fun. Like, I love it. I love the competition. Um, I would say those uh, games that we had preseason – really prepared us and prepared me as a pitcher just to know what to expect and then see like where my pitching was at when it came to um, top teams because I mean we have like at least five probably top 15 or top 20 teams in the pack like, um, so it's not easy it's never an easy schedule I, I knew that it wasn't going to be like a walk in the park every weekend so um, but so far I've had fun and I think since UCLA like we've really come together and um, worked worked really hard as a team. And I think we're a different team than we were at the beginning of the pack for sure. Yeah, and Lindsay, you guys work really well together um, in games. You know, one of you will be starter and then one of you will close. What's it been like for the two of you um, to work together in the bullpen, to work together in the dugout, talk about pitches. Um, how has that been for you? And what does that process look like? Um, it's been really nice. I think now we know each other and we know that when it's like time for one of us to um, be taken out that we know that we're going to back each other up. So we know that we just have to go out there, do our stuff and and compete. And Allison, yes. how has that been like for you in terms of when you guys do pregame or when you're prepping for a game? Um, do you guys watch film together? Is it something that you sit down and talk with one another or how does that go? Yeah, we will watch a uh, film a couple of days before the weekend. Uh, definitely watch it together. Um, we'll go over the batter's weaknesses and we'll talk about like what each of us see. Like maybe I'll see something that the batter is doing and Lindsay will see something and just, you know, talk back and forth about it. Um, and then like before games, we both know we're competitors and we both know we're out there to get the job done. So I think it's, it's just a cool atmosphere. Like we're both warming up, we're both preparing hours before the game and like, we know we got it. So it's, it's really fun. And, and I love working with her. And Lindsay club Farrington, I've actually been there to Farrington stadium. Uh, it is quite the atmosphere. I mean, it's a little different in COVID because um, you know, you've got some capacity restrictions and you're throwing to Maddie Hackbarth, which Maddie has had an incredible season thus far. Um, she's leading, you know, the pack in, in all various offensive categories, but she's also a receiver as well. Tell me what it's like to throw to Maddie um, and the energy that she brings to this team. Um, it's, it's very fun to play with her. I mean, she knows when it's a good time to call timeout and come help us reset. She, she'll be able to tell if we're thinking too much, so. She's good at calling timeout, making us reset, take a deep breath, reminding us that that we're here because we want to compete and that we're going to be in these close games. But that's why we're here. We wanted to be doing that. So, I mean, I she's a great person to be having behind the plate. And Allison, in terms of her behind the plate and then her at her uh, at the plate you know, dropping bombs every now and then, <laughs> how does that get, does that give you confidence as a pitcher knowing that not only Maddie, but the rest of your offense um, is very explosive. And, and, you know, it's a, they never give up. 
you know, it's, it's always down to the last out. And I think that's what's most impressive about the Sun Devils and, and the offense is that you can never kind of count them out. How does that, does that breathe confidence into you as a pitcher? Oh, absolutely. Knowing that even if we uh, fall short, maybe a few innings, that our offense is there and they're never giving up. We're in the dugout. You don't feel that energy of, oh, we're, we're done. We're giving up now because they scored a few runs. No, like we know we're going to score runs. We know we're scoring a lot of runs. Um, never count us out in any ball game. So um, you really like with the past and this whole season so far, the amount of runs that uh, our offense has scored, like, how can you not have confidence and, and feel better as a pitcher when you have that offense behind you? I have, I just love when they come in after home runs and there's so many all the time. So it's just like, Oh my God, but like giving high fives and all that. And they're always, I got you like, let's go. We're a team. Like I got you after home runs, like after if we had a tough inning, they'll come in and, and you're saying, thank you. Like, good job. Like way to work. And it gets the whole team going and it's, it's great. Yeah, Lindsay, what is, tell me what it's like, that atmosphere in the dugout. I've seen um, in terms of watching the Pat 12 Network, we get a little bit of glimpse of maybe some broadcasting happening with Cups or we've got, you know, what are, who, who would you say on the team is uh, the craziest in the dugout or the one that gets everybody riled up? Um, I would say Tat and Harley. I yeah. mean, they both have the loudest, the loudest yells and they know how to get the dugout going. So yeah <laughs> and how do they do that are they the ones like getting everybody just are they cheering or or what what's it like what's that vibe like um tat will start dancing and then that will just get everyone else around dancing <laughs> as well with the music but um harley by far has the loudest yell so as soon as someone hears her yell everyone starts yelling back <laughs> So it's literally Club Carrington and that guy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Allison, in terms of um, pitching, we'll, we'll switch gears here a bit. In, after your fastball, when you're, you started pitching, what was the first pitch that you learned after learning how to throw a fastball? It was the changeup for sure. So after um, the fastball that I learned just to throw a strike, um, when I went on to movement pitches, uh, first learned a drop ball, um, and second was change up. And I was a drop ball pitcher up till maybe I was 15 or 16. I threw drop ball and change up. That's really the only two pitches I threw seriously wow. until 15. Very cool. And then when did you learn how to throw a rise? I probably started developing it around 15 and it really, uh, started working for me a lot 16 you I'd say beginning of 16 you so you're a drop ball pitcher up to 16 you so it, at any point you know you could hone in in your craft and you can also add that pitch late in the game so would, would you say that um, when you were learning your rise or, or or getting recruited would you say that um, that was a little bit later or would you say you were kind of like right on course I was at the time I was a later recruit technically for pitchers um, because I was getting recruited during the time before the rule change where we had, I mean, all the girls in my class pitching wise, they were already getting committed to the top like teams in the country. And I was like, are there going to be any top D1 teams? I don't have a pitcher in my class committed already. Um, so I, would, I was a later one, I would say. And I was also really small and skinny. So I wasn't you know, blowing scouts away with throwing high 60s and being really big and strong at that age either. So, um, but Coach Ford, she saw the spin, she saw the potential and um, she believed in me, so. Would you say that was difficult for you in terms of the recruiting process because it was later and, and how did you how did you deal with that? Um, I, I think it, it was difficult because it was in my mind, I was seeing a bunch of girls my age like on um, the announcements of the softball pages saying, oh, so-and-so committed to this school, this school. And I'm like, well, dang, um, <laughs> there goes more schools off my list. Um, but that definitely fueled me. I remember just working out like in the gym every day. And I was thinking like, I'm going to be there. Like, there's no doubt. I was like, I can do this. Sometimes I'd question. I was like, maybe I'm just not big enough. And like, I would wonder if I would ever be good enough to compete at that level. Um, but I use that as a fuel, even at that age when I was like 15, 16, that was my fuel. I was like, 
I can work hard. People have told me if you work hard, you can beat just natural talent. So uh, I ran with that and uh, haven't really looked back. <laughs> I would say it is quite successful. And, and, um, and in terms of the younger players out there, um, I think it's important to hear that story as well, because not everybody has that perfect path, right? And um, it's just great to see you shine at Arizona State as well. Lindsay, for you, you, what was your, um, what was the first pitch that you learned after your fastball? Um, I honestly don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was my change up. Okay. But um, yeah. And do you remember when you first learned it? Like, how do you, you guys throw the same type of change up? Or is it, are they different? Is it a circle change? Is it like, how do you, how do you throw your change up? Um, I hold mine the same way. I hold all my other pitches like curve, rise. Yeah. That's why it's so hard to pick up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just release it differently. <laughs> yeah. um, and then in terms of your recruiting process, when you were um, looking at Arizona state, what was that like for you? Um. Well, at first I was committed to another school and after the visit, I realized that's not what I wanted. So I decommitted and coach Ford was able to watch me and she saw that I was lefty and that I had potential. And so she called me and we just made it work. So I never really looked back from that, but I'm very glad that I'm here. Uh, well, you're super fun to watch both of you. Um, it's just been a pleasure to cover y'all and um, just excited to see um, how this season ends. So we'll end it on this last question. If you could tell, we'll start with you, Allison. If you could tell your younger self something, like you, like 12 years old, um, when you were just starting softball, what, what would you say to your 12-year-old self um, playing softball or to those 12-year-old softball players out here that, that look up to you um, and, and are watching you play on television and see you out there, what would you say to them? Um, I think I would say your hard work is going to pay off. It will. I think I would tell myself that all that hard work, all that time that you're spending, it's going to pay off. The vision that you have and where you want to be in four years, you're going to get there. Like with that hard work, you're going to get there. Um, tell like the 12 year olds and just have fun too. Like, enjoy it. Enjoy the process. I mean, you're going to have times when you're not going to like the sport it just happens. I remember going and crying in my room, like, why can't I play now? Like I suck. La, 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 la. Like you're going to have times like that, but um, you just have to remember to also have fun too and compete and work hard. Like, and it's going to pay off. Hard work will pay off. I like it. And Lindsay, how about you? Yeah, I would say the same thing, exactly that. Um, I remember there are times where my dad would um, take me out to pitch in the parking lot with just the lights at night and he would make me throw even though I didn't want to be there. But he was like, no, you could, he like saw the potential that I had. So um, I had to learn how to enjoy that hard work. And I would also say to trust the process and um, yeah, that's really it. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining uh, D1 Softball's Pitching Circle. Good luck the rest of the season. Um, and hopefully we can have you back on, um, you know, whenever you guys, whenever you guys want. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you so much.